Hi guys, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Thursday, January 9th. It is my first video of 2020. Hope you guys had a great start to your new year um, and that you've been stitching all the things. Um, I have really been enjoying seeing all of the 2020 plans pop up here on FlossTube as well as on Instagram and Facebook. It's been a lot of fun to see what everyone's plans and goals are for this next year. And I think that's fantastic because with so many of us, working on our whips and, you know, planning our plans and our goals and all the things that helps to keep all of us motivated. And I think that's great. Um, this is also, this video is my one year anniversary, my floss, floss tube anniversary, my floss anniversary. I've been on floss tube one year and it has been an amazing journey beyond my wildest expectations. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. Um, a lot of you guys stumbled upon me by accident and I'm glad that you decided to stick around and come back every two weeks to see what I'm up to. I really appreciate it. It tickles me pink when somebody sends me a message and tells me that they just finished binge watching all my videos. I think that's fantastic. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you to all of my previous subscribers, just everybody who has helped me along in my journey over the past year. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. I do have uh, some giveaways for this video because I can't not have a giveaway to celebrate one year on Floss Tube. So you'll just have to stay tuned because I'll put it towards the end of the video. In the meantime, we're going to talk about my whips. Um, I got some happy mail. Uh, I had a finish and I also um, found some more whips. Uh, if you watch my last video, I, I showed what was in my mocking basket of whips and I kind of talked a little bit about what I think for me is a whip. And so, um, I have things that are in progress. So I have stitches on some of the things and then on other things I've begun kidding them. And so then I, I consider them to be a whip because that means I have the intent to stitch. And so when I was searching for my giveaway charts, cause one of them, somehow escaped and ended up back with my regular charts. And I came across four whips that I had begun kitting up for. And so of course I have to move them because they're not supposed to be in there. And I will show those to you very shortly. So first things first, this video has no notes uh, because I did not intend to film today. Normally I film on Fridays. And tomorrow there was not really a good time to do it. Um, unexpectedly, some things came up. And so I am filming today. Husband has went to the grocery store. I really didn't need that much food. So I, I know he'll be back sooner rather than later. Um, if there's anything that I forget to mention in this video, I will make sure to list it below. Usually everything that I talk about, everything that I show, I try very hard to put in the description box. Also, if I make a mistake, I try to make sure it scrolls across because sometimes even though, even when I'm talking, my mind is, is like two steps ahead. And so sometimes the way that I say it, it comes out sounding wrong or I say the wrong name or wrong, wrong something. And so I make sure to kind of, I always watch my videos back. And so I always try to make sure to put the correct information in. Um, let's start with some happy mail. So I, a couple of videos ago, I talked about a designer, Liz Matthews. Hello from Liz Matthews. She has a floss tube channel. I'm pretty positive it's just Liz Matthews. And then she has an Instagram, which is hello from Liz Matthews. And I'll put all of her information down below. On my last video, um, I was in the process of doing my video when the mail came and in the mail was a package from Liz Matthews. So she is returning to designing. She previously did design. And then um, I know she said what she did in between designing and now, but I cannot remember. Uh, but anyway, she has returned to designing and she's re-releasing some of her old patterns. She's um, giving them an, uh, like a new look or freshening them up a little bit and then re-releasing them. And she has an Etsy shop and I'll make sure to put that down below too. And when I stumble upon her, she had tagged me on Instagram and I remember that I had watched a couple of her videos previously, but what happens is I watch all of my videos on the TV 
and I usually watch it while I'm sewing. And so sometimes I will just let um, YouTube pick what it wants to show me as far as floss tube videos because then that way I get to see a variety of stitchers. And sometimes I assume that I am already subscribed to some of these people only to find out later on that I'm not. And so Liz Matthews was one of the ones I remember watching her first couple of videos and I assumed I was subscribed to her and then I discovered I wasn't. So, but I am now. Anyway, so Liz had given me a shout out and then in that same video, she showed some um, Christmas trees that she was going to convert into cross stitch charts. They were punch needle and they had the shape of the Christmas tree and they're on a little pedestal. And I mean, if you've, if you watch my home tour, you know that I love Christmas trees. I mean, I've got one that is lit all year round. It's winter now. Uh, I took all the Christmas stuff is put away and so we are into winter. Um, and so you know that I love Christmas trees. And so when I saw that she was releasing or she was soon to be releasing Christmas trees, I was like, I'm gonna have to get that. And so she ended up watching my video when I was talking about the Christmas tree. And so she sent me the Christmas trees. So these, um, she has went ahead and converted them into cross stitch. Again, they were punch needle and I'm so excited. I, I am so excited. Uh, after I saw the trees on her video, I couldn't get them out of my mind because I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I knew the goal that I had set for myself. So I knew that I had to wait till at least summer before I, you know, picked up the charts because my plan is so if you watch my last video, you know that my plan had been to stitch mainly from stash. And I thought if I make good progress, I'll reward myself with these. And she sent them to me. So thank you so much, Liz. I am so thrilled. I cannot wait to stitch these. I'm going to stitch them in the summer and that way I will have enough time to fully finish them. Again, I know exactly what I'm going to do with them and I can't wait. So hopefully in my fall videos, it will show these at some point being finished. I know I'm going to do more than just the two. Um, I'm pretty positive there were three in the series and I, and I'm, I think when I last checked, these two were available on her Etsy site, but I'm not sure if the third one's released yet. So when the third one does release, I will reward myself with that one in the summer after I've gotten some of my other stuff finished. So I'm so thrilled. I mean, I can already see them in my mind. I know, I just, I know what I'm doing and I'm, I'm so excited. So thank you so much, Liz. I appreciate it. I will put the link to Liz's channel as well as her Etsy shop and her Instagram handle down below. You guys should go check her out. She's lovely and fabulous. And I always enjoy her videos cause she's just, she's just very kind and very sweet. So go give, go give Liz a look-see and I'll put the, I'll put the link below so that you guys can go find her. Anyway, and then day before yesterday, I think Monday, Tuesday, um, I received another little bit of happy mail from Christy, who is um, Crosshatch Quilts on Instagram. Christy and I have been friends for a very, very long time on Instagram. Um, probably because I don't remember exactly the year that I officially got onto Instagram, but I remember she was one of the very first quilters that I found. And I always, I love everything that she makes. I love I've always, I've been a huge fan of hers for many, many, many years. And we have been friends for many, many, many years. And she's lovely. And if you guys are on Instagram, you probably know who she is already. And if you are on Instagram and you don't know, you need to go follow her because she's just absolutely the sweetest. Anyway, so Christy knows that I love Jane Austen. And so she sent me, this is the Jane Austen sampler by River Drift House. It's a beautiful sampler. And I, I'm so thrilled that she sent it to me. It's so sweet and kind of her. And this probably won't make my plans this year, but I am shooting for a 2021 at some point. I love samplers. And I think that, because my plan this year is to redo my bedroom and kind of take it from looking like two teenagers live there to looking like some adults. It's an adult room. And it's got like a nice bed and nice everything and not, not what it is now that so that is my plan and so this this would be perfect hanging in my room and then because she knows I love pumpkins she sent me Jack's house I love this one 
and I loved watching her progress last year when she was stitching it up. Um, it is by Stacy Nash, and I love Stacy Nash. I have a couple of her patterns, and I have stitched one or two, and I think that this one I will be um, making into a pillow. So my theme for 2020 with a lot of my things is to either frame them or make them into uh, pillows, like the little smalls, because I love when uh, people post pictures of their dough bowls. And I just, I love seeing all the arrangements of pillows. And so my plan is that on any of the smalls that I'm planning on stitching, I'm going to make it into pillows for my little, like my three tiered tray. And I do have, I call it a trench. It's supposed to be a dough bowl, but it's really a long trench. And I think um, it would look so sweet with a bunch of pillows and other little things in there. So that is my plan for this year um, with some of the stuff that I am going to be stitching is to fully finish it into small pillows and um, frame a lot of other stuff. And a lot of the stuff that I'm doing are either humongous or super tiny. So, and I forgot to mention that in my last video that that was going to be my plan for 2020 is the theme was going to be frames and mini pillows with everything that I'm stitching. But anyway, thank you so much, Christy. You're the best. I cannot wait to start stitching it. And you already know, we've already chatted about this on Instagram. So, but thank you so much. I appreciate it so, so much. You both are so sweet to think of me and to send me those patterns. I, I just really appreciate it. It's so awesome. So I am going to pause the video really, really quick because again, it kind of helps the upload process when I break them up into smaller segments. So I'm gonna do a quick pause and I'm going to move a few things around and then come back. How about we move on to whips? So I, so I've redone this video a couple of times and I don't remember if in the video that I just did before this one, I mentioned the whips that I discovered in my basket. So I have two baskets. I have one basket that is my whip. So it's, I, I refer to it as the mocking basket of whip because it, it's a white wicker basket. And so I refer to everything in there as, as mocking me because I keep it in my bedroom. And so that way I go to it and pull from it rather than go to the other. I have a, oh, it's, I, I refer to it as a, as a basket, but it's actually, I don't, I don't even know what it's called, but it's one of those ones where you can stick, it's a box. I mean, it's shaped like a box and it's open on the top and, or a cube. It's shaped like a cube with an open top and then you can stick them in shelving. And that's what I have. I just have one of those cubes. And so that is where I store all of my charts that I pick up and I keep them all together and in one place so I always know where they're at. And that way, if I leave it out in my dungeon, put away, um, I will go pull from the basket that I constantly have to pass by anytime I go into my bedroom. So I was looking for, I had misplaced one of the charts that I'm giving away in this video. And while I was digging through the charts that I have in there, I discovered four whips that somehow got left out in that box. And so I pulled them out because my rule is the moment I start kidding something up, that means it becomes a whip because I do have intent to stitch. While it's in the box, I can go through it as often as I need to. And if I come across something that I'm not really loving, then I need to find a new home for it uh, because I will never stitch it. And there's no point in keeping that stuff in that box for year after year after year, because I know me and I know that if I look at something and I'm like, yeah, I'm never going to stitch that. It's better just to go to somebody who I know will love it. So the four charts that I found, and it's really weird because two of them, I recently added the fabric to it. So I don't understand why it didn't get moved over. But the first one is Noel Sampler by Brenda Gervais. And I apologize for the lighting. I thought that I had kind of fixed it a little bit in here, but the sun decided to peek out behind the cloud and it's going to be very iridescent in here now. So I apologize. Um, this uh, chart I picked up in the fall, I think it was. And I am going to stitch it on a piece of 40 count vintage country, Lugon, or no, vintage country Newcastle that I found in my stash. That is the perfect size for it. Um, I'm pretty positive, let me look here. So this one is charted with DMC. So I will go ahead and um, use those colors. Uh, I will begin kitting this up 
and I do I do want to have it finished for Christmas this year and so I might stitch start stitching it sometime in the summer but we'll see because these plans can always change and I and I'm pretty positive I might already have one other Christmas piece that's already almost fully kitted so the way that I do it is if I have something that's almost fully kitted, that's the one I'm going to pull first versus one that maybe only has the fabric for, unless it's really, really calling to me. So the next one is by Plum Street Sampler. It's Toil and Trouble. Yes, I try to read backwards because, you know, when you're filming in front of your phone, everything's backwards until you upload it and then it reverts. Um, this chart I've had for quite a while. It was one of the first ones that I bought when I came back to cross stitching because I found a pin on Pinterest and followed the pin to one, two, three stitch and I purchased it. I also purchased a piece of 40 count vintage pearl linen to stitch it on because I think I saw someone else on Instagram had stitched it and had used the same. The same. I think this is by Lakeside. I've never stitched on a Lakeside. I think that's the name of it. And so I am anxious to at some point start stitching this. At one time I did have it almost all the way kitted and then I ended up working on something else and I pulled all the threads from it and never added it back. But it does come with a DMC conversion as well as General Arts. And most likely I will probably do it in DMC because I'm not a big fan. The trees are really stripy and I'm not really a big fan of, of stripy trees. So I most likely will do the DMC conversion, possibly. And then the other one was one I picked up from Market last year. Um, I got it at Acorns and Threads and that is a Savior's, plays, a savior's Praise by Shakespeare's Peddler. I love this one. I have so, there's a couple people on Instagram. I think Ginger Shawl is one of them. I watched her stitch this up last year and so many times I wanted to start it myself and I didn't because I had other stuff that I needed to work on, but I really would love to start this at some point. I will do a DMC conversion for it. It is charted in anchor as well as some fancy floss, but I will just do the DMC conversion for it. And the chosen fabric for it is a 40 count Malo by, I think it's a Zweigart, a Zweigart. So that one is joining the whip pile. And then this one I feel really bad about because I bought it when it first came out because I fell absolutely in love with it. I have heard a rumor that there is a companion piece for it, although you cannot get it yet because it was either a retreat piece or a club piece. And I have seen it and when it does release, I will buy it. Whether it releases tomorrow or a year from now, I will buy it. And the two of them will be stitched and hung together. And that is Heritage Sampler by Plum Street Samplers. I'm very much patriotic. I always say that if you were to cut me open my heart, there would be an American flag wrapped around it because I just love, I'm very patriotic and I love anything that has to do with America, 4th of July, American flags, liberty, American revolution, American civil war. I mean, honestly, I just, I really do, I, I, I bleed red, white, and blue, honestly. So when this came out, I pre-ordered it. I think I pre-ordered it from Beach Cottage Stitchers, Stitcher on, yeah, I think it's Beach Cottage Stitcher. I think that's what, I don't remember. Anyway, I pre-ordered it from her. It is Beach, it says right here, Beach Cottage Stitchers. Um, so I purchased, I pre-ordered it from them, and then I also pre-ordered the fabric for it as well. And it is a 36 count vintage exemplar, and I've never stitched on vintage exemplar before. And there was a couple of times where I went in and I was gonna take this out and I was gonna use it for something else, and I put it right back. So I 
We'll be doing it in the called for DMC. I have seen it stitched up with DMC and it looks fantastic. And so that is my plans for that. There's been a, I, I think I've already bought the DMC threads. I think they're just in my box because most of the colors I recognize the numbers and I'm pretty sure I might already be able to get this up. Hmm, I should go investigate that. So those four patterns will be put into the mocking basket and that way when it comes time for me to need a new cross stitch project because I have completed these ones that I'm stitching on, that's the first place that I will go to pull and that is the next items that I will begin stitching. That is pretty much a hard and fast rule with me this year. I am going to pull from the box first before I go pull from the basket out there. There are a couple of charts that I know I want to stitch this year. Um, there is a Blackbird Designs. It is the, the booklet that has all the American... Um, a lot of people have stitched it. It's the one that's got the house and there's an eagle and American flag across the top. I have that book. I can't think what the name of it is, but I know that there's two things out of there that I want to try to stitch between now and the 4th of July. Um, but I'm not going to, if it, if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to, you know, beat myself up about it. I'll just keep going and, and, and keep pulling the things out of my box. But those are ones that I know that I'm going to start also kidding up. And again, if you watched my last video where I showed you all of my whips, there's no way I'm going to be able to get any of that stuff done in 2020. It's probably a lifelong project really, but I'm going to do my best to get through as many of them as I can. Um, a lot of the stuff is, is huge. I seem to be very attracted to ginormous stitches that take me the rest of my life. I don't know what it is about them, but that's usually where I gravitate towards too. And I'm going to stop beating myself up about it. Um, I'm just going to go with the flow. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up and then I'm going to pull what I've been working on. So hang on a second. So as you can probably tell, the sun decided to come out from behind a cloud and it is very bright in here. Um, I've tried to close the curtains as much as I can, but it'll pass. Uh, we're supposed to get a cold snap here and I don't, and again, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier in my video because I restarted the beginning like 10 times. Um, we're supposed to get a cold snap, it's supposed to get, I think the high one of the days is supposed to be 22 and they've been talking snow, but honestly, I don't really believe that. I don't put much faith in that anymore, especially not after snowpocalypse. So a snowpocalypse that didn't happen. Um, okay, so I have been continuing on with Queen of Freedom by Marabilia. I get so excited when Saturday rolls around and I get to pick her back up again because I absolutely love working on her. She's so much fun. Um, and so this is actually the first time that I've seen her in two weeks because I roll her onto my scroll frames and I only see the bottom half of her. And so today was the first time in two weeks that I have seen her and she's beautiful and I love her so much. Here she is in all her glory. Uh, so I, uh, let's see, I think in my last video, I was over, over this way. And I think I might've had this um, chunk done like right in here. And so over the past two weekends, I have been working in this area right here. And I just have this big column of white to come down. And I think this is the last part of red. So this is the last chunk of red in the flag. There's another column of white. And then this section right here is white and gray. Cause that is like her lap is right here. And so this would be the dress coming down. And so this is just gonna be a big giant chunk of white and gray. So I'm loving her. I, I really do. I really absolutely love her. And she's so fabulous. I wish that, um, I wish the camera would do it justice. I will insert a picture at the end of the video so you guys can see what she looks like in better lighting. Um, I started her last year in February and I put her away sometime in March. And then I think I picked her up again in Stitch Mania 
and then I put her away again and I might have picked her up again in July put her away and then this after I finished Sally Spencer in November I think it was I picked her back up again and I will continue working on her every weekend until she is complete so love her I'm stitching her on a piece of 32 count vintage Sahara with all the called for DMC, all the called for Mill Hill beads, and Krynik. And the little needle minder I picked up from Mad for Minders. It is Betsy Ross. There's the American flag. She's been stitching on it. And I'm assuming that the men in the picture are ones from the Continental Congress. So. I got, if I didn't mention it before, I got the needle miner from Mad for Minders. So the last couple of videos, I have not shown this one because in December, I did not work on it at all. I was focusing on um, getting um, ornaments done. Um, I think I was working on two ornaments and I was trying to get those done. And so that's when I would work on those was in the morning and any Christmas stuff that I was working on, that's when I would work on it in the morning instead of this one. So this is by Tempting Tangles. It is Words of Enlightenment. It is a stitch along that started, I don't remember when it started, in the summer? Early summer? Might have started early summer. Um, I am way behind. I think number 14 or 15, I think it's 14 is releasing tomorrow and I'm on number nine. I'm almost done with nine. I just have a little bit to fill in here, here, and then right here. And I will be done with nine and I can move on to 10. I am doing this with the called for or the recommended DMC threads and I am loving it. It's a lot of fun to stitch up. I work on it in the morning um, after my son goes to school. I will work on it for half an hour. So that is why the progress has been a little slow. I've decided that when I finish uh, Words of Enlightenment, I am going to use that half an hour in the morning to work on um, ornaments for my summer tree, my Halloween tree, my Thanksgiving tree, and my Christmas tree. But first I need to get that done. I think the last part releases the first part of February. So they're getting very close to being at an end, but I will continue um, stitching up until it is complete. It's a lot of fun. It's very easy. Um, the directions are fantastic. I will just flash the direct or the chart really quick. I, there's no way you're gonna be able to put the whole sampler together. Um, this is what the chart looks like when it releases. So it's just a little, um, does it even say what the count, stitch count is? It does not. It's not very big. It's like 64 by 64 maybe. So very easy to do, um, except for when I started back on it on Monday, I, for some reason, I'll put in like 10 stitches and then I have to rip them out because they're not in the right spot. And I don't know why it's been, it's been that way all week. I, yesterday I only put in like 10 threads and I had to rip them all out today because they were in the wrong spot. I don't know, I don't know what my deal is, but I, yeah, I've been struggling with that one for a little bit. So hopefully I can get my act together and put in more stitches than I have to take out. I had to pause, pause the video really fast because number one, I had to sneeze, and number two, I couldn't remember what the name of the fabric was on the chart I'm gonna show you next. So I started um, Heartstring Samplery, baby, it's cold outside. It is a chart by Beth Twist. Um, she is going to be one of the designers at the retreat in September, so I'm very excited to meet her. This is the first time I have stitched anything by her. I do own a couple of her charts. And I am a huge fan of, oh boy, I just had the name of it. It's the big, the big one. I can't remember the name of it. It's got all the animals. Oh boy, I forgot the name of it. But it's really awesome and you probably are screaming it at me right now. I can picture it in my mind. It's a very, very large piece and I can't think of the name of it, but I can picture it and you're screaming it. Anyway, we'll move along. Anyway, so I started this one right before the new year. I don't remember the name, 
because even though I have started keeping track of everything that I'm stitching and when I start it for some unknown reason, I left the start date off of this one. I don't know. Uh, so I am stitching it on a piece of 36 count Patriots Brew by r and um, This was one of the pieces of fabric that I picked up from 123 Stitch. It was on clearance, so it was only like $4 and 30 some cents. And so I got this and I got two other pieces of fabric because I'd never stitched on r and before. I'm a huge fan of it now. It stitches up so beautifully. The stitches lay fantastic. I love the colors. I'm, I'm a big fan of neutral colors, although, um, you know, like with Skeleton Crew and ones like that, I can be persuaded to stitch it on something else. But for the majority of the things that I stitch, I do gravitate towards neutrals. And this is definitely one that I will pick up again and again and again because it's perfect for so many things. Um, I'm stitching it with all of the called for um, threads, except for um, I did not have weeks, I think it's grits, weeks grits, yeah, weeks grits, and I substituted peach ice cream. So here are the colors that I'm using. Um, and for some reason, those, they're showing up not as pretty on camera as they are in person. Um, I did have the majority of them in my stash because I get um, Trisha's nest eggs, nest egg, and I was getting the Gentle Arts, but I've switched over to Weeks because a lot of the things that I am stitching coming up, um, a lot of them call for weeks and they seem to just use like even though they're different designers they seem to use the same colors and so those are ones that I can just pick up um, oh and I get a lot of comments about the needle minder um, let me take my needle off so the needle minder is um, mr. bean uh, as a woman a stitching woman and I I, I love mr. bean um, I also loved him as the Black Adler. Um, I just, he's hes hilarious and I love watching him. And when I saw that on the Mad for Minders website, I snatched it up because I loved it. Um, and that's kind of my go-to place for needle minders. Um, I love, I just, I really love their needle minders. And so ever so often um, I'll pop on and grab like one or two. I have some uh, that I did pick up they're coming in the mail at some point um, and I just picked up two more because I feel like needle minders aren't necessarily stash they're more for my pleasure and so I don't mind every couple of months spending a few bucks and getting some new needle minders um, because I collect needle minders and I collect scissors so anyway so moving along um, on January 1st the Sal that I am co-hosting with Deborah Canopy Stitches, which by the way, Deborah is back on Instagram finally after a little hiatus. Uh, so you guys can, um, she posted a picture today. You guys can swing by and take a look. Um, it's, I'm probably gonna get, is it John Foster? I always wanna call it Philip Foster because there's a Philip Foster house in Sandy, Oregon. And so I always wanna call it that, but I think it's John Foster. Um, she posted her finish of John Foster and it's fabulous. So if you're on Instagram, swing on by and check it out. Um, anyway, Deborah and I are co-hosting the Anniversaries of the Heart Stitch Along. It started on January 1st. Um, she is going to be stitching hers individually. She's not going to stitch all 12. I am stitching all, or she's not gonna be stitching, well, there's 12 charts. But there's 14 um, parts to it. And as long as you have the 12 charts, you'll have all the parts for it. So she is only going to be stitching some of the, the charts. I'm going to be stitching them all. I'm going to be stitching them all in one piece. I have to admit, I, so when, you know, I've had the fabric, which is a 35 count sand. I've had it since the middle of summer and I never actually did the th I would collect the thread but I never pulled the first called for threads that snow garden calls for I did I never pulled them and so on um, 
December 31st, I decided, well, I better go ahead and I better pull the threads because I, you know, the stitch along starts the next day. So I went in and I pulled all the threads for it, put it all in the bag, didn't give it another thought until about an hour later when I realized all of the threads that I pulled were very autumn-y looking. None of them look like the way that they're supposed to look in the house. I mean, it's very blue, very gray with whites, and there's a little bit of green. And everything that I pulled was very light tan, khaki, beigey, and they all looked exactly like my fabric. So I had a moment of panic because here I am hosting a stitch along and the very first chart out of the box, I'm not gonna be able to use any of the called for, I'm gonna have to mix it up. So what I decided to do was, is go back in, go through all of my thread stash and re-pull and re-pull it so that it looks kind of like the one that is in the picture. So this is my progress so far, stitching it again on a piece of 35 count sand that I picked up from Willow Fabrics in the UK. I am stitching it two over two with none of the called for threads. <laughs> I think there's like one or two of the called for threads. Uh, but none, I mean, it's, it's all a new thread pull. And I will briefly go over what it is that I substituted. Um, so here, here's what my bundle of threads look like. Uh, so there's um, some weeks, some DMC, and a few gentle arts. The only thing that I'm not really happy about, and I am just, I'm going to leave it, um, is there's like, I think these are supposed to be bricks, and I'm not... I'm not really loving that yellowy khaki. I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave it though. I think that I'm being too nitpicky. Uh, what I should have done, and I've seen on two different um, stitchers who are, are following along in the South, they pulled the DMC conversion and that's exactly what I should have done. I should, I should have just pulled the DMCs. I should not have, because they pulled the DMC and it looks exactly like the picture. And I would have saved myself a lot of frustration. So I am, <coughs> let me, let me get my list here. Nope, I don't have it written down. So I am using a DMC 3866, uh, DMC B5200, DMC 640, Weeks Dolphin, DMC 739, DMC uh, 3862, Gentle Arts Aged Pewter, Weeks Cocoa, uh, Weeks Pelican Gray, Gentle Arts Harvest Basket, Tin Bucket, and Lexington Green. So those are the threads that I am using and in the description box below, I will put what is listed in the chart and what my conversion is in case you are interested. If you're also struggling, if you haven't joined along with us, but you have the called for threads in your stash and the, the thing is, if I would have had a different piece of linen, if it wouldn't have been this, you know, cause the sand is, it's like an orangey, it's like, it's orangey. Um, like a golden orange. And so if I would have had a different fabric, I probably would have stuck with the called for because they looked amazing together. It was very pretty, very harvesty looking. Um, but because I had this particular linen, I needed something that was gonna show up a little bit better. Because when I put in, I forget which one of the colors that I, you know, I started stitching with, you couldn't even see it. So that's why I went I decided to match it more to what the the actual picture is instead of what it's called for. I have seen it stitched up with the called for threads. They do it does look beautiful as a harvest house. It really does. So it's just kind of your preference and your linen. Um, but I'm not going to change my linen. I'm going to just forge ahead, and hopefully it all comes together in the end. So if you are joining along, thank you so much. Um, I will put the, I will put the hashtag, I will scroll it, but it's uh, BB Anniversaries 2020. Um, it's a forever kind of style. Um, I do have a goal for myself, which is to finish it by the end of the year. Um, 
This block also, I was unsure of what relative, because I'm going to customize it to our relatives. So uh, some of my husband's and then some of my relatives will be in it. I think, so um, my, my grandma, so my grandma's grandma was a quilter. And I actually have my grandma's, my grandma's grandma's sewing machine. It's a Singer tread, Treadle sewing machine. And I, I have it. Um, it was given to me a couple of years ago when my grandma decided to move. She didn't have any room for it anymore. And she'd been trying for a couple of years to give it to me. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to take it away from you. You're supposed to give it to me when you pass away. And, you, you know, and, but she's like, finally, she's like, you have to take it. I don't have any room for it. It's, it's on your watch now. So the way that it, it works was my grandma's grandma. She was a quilter and she was a dressmaker. And she taught my grandma how to sew and quilt, just like my grandma taught me how to sew and quilt. Um, and so when she passed away, the sewing machine was given to my grandma because my grandma was the oldest granddaughter. And so in carrying on with that tradition, that was my grandma's plan also. She was going to give it to her oldest granddaughter, which is me. So I not only am the firstborn, but I'm the first granddaughter. And so by default, the sewing machine came into my possession and I have um, charge of taking care of it until my oldest granddaughter is born. Um, if I am so gracious to get one. And even if it's a boy, I, I mean, I'll figure it out, but the hope is that I can continue to carry on the tradition and to pass down and you know, who knows, maybe my oldest granddaughter will be a quilter too. And so in carrying on with the granddaughters becoming quilters, that would be kind of cool. So anyway, I thought maybe I would put her initials on there. Um, also on my dad's side of the family, my grandma's, so on my dad's side of the family, his mom's mom was also a quilter as well as her sisters. And I have one of her quilts too. So I can also go that route as well, but I'm pretty positive it's going to be my great, great grandmother. So it'd be my great grandfather's mother. So I think that's how it works. My grandma's grandma. It seems easier to say my grandma's grandma. Anyway, so I'm going to uh, get her initials and get her date of birth and put that on this particular block. So one more thing before we move on to, well, two more things, two more things, and then we're going to move on to the giveaway. Um, I finished, and if you follow me on Instagram or my Facebook page, which is Pumpkin Hollow Quilting, or Instagram Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, you saw that I posted this a um, couple weeks ago. Uh, this is Thanksgiving Comes Again by the Prairie Schooler. I've been working on this all fall, and I have to finish. Um, I stitched it on a piece of mystery linen. Um, I think it started out as a 28 count and that makes it a 30 count now. Uh, it's a piece of linen. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby, brought it home, tea coffee dyed it, baked it, and stitched it with DMC. Pretty sure it's the call for DMC. Started this sometime in the fall and oh I started it at it was the beginning of November because I stitched this pumpkin at the retreat, that Acorns and Threads, the Fall Flame by Acorns and Threads. And so I stitched my pumpkin there. So I have finished it now. Um, right now, I do not have any plans to fully finish it until I find just the right thing that I'm looking for. And I know I've talked about this um, in previous videos. What I'm looking for is sort of like a pedestal stand that will um, kind of go up and then I will mount it up above because um, on the table that's out in the other, the entryway, what do they call those? Skinny table. Um, I usually decorate right there and I've showed it in all the home tours and it's the one, it's the table that's sitting in front of the big quilts. Um, I want it to sit on the side and raise up so I can put stuff around it. So uh, when I find, when I find something like that, I will go ahead and FFO it. But I, um, I haven't even looked. I've been to Hobby Lobby and it was just kind of like a quick in out. And so maybe the next time I go, I will spend a little time looking around because I know they were getting out the spring. Um, they call it the spring shop. And so I feel like a lot of people find those, those pedestals then. So that is my plan. 
So I'm gonna show you one more thing. I'm gonna pause the video really quickly because it's across the room. It is a quilt, but I'm not gonna like drone on and on about it. Um, I just wanna show it really, really quick um, because it is part of my whips and uh, just, you know, hang in there and then we'll get to the giveaway. So hold please. In my last video, I know that I talked about the whips that I had for cross stitch, but I also have quilts that are in various stages of progress. Um, I discovered that I had quite a few that were unfinished. It didn't really sit well with me, which is also when I decided to take a good look at my cross stitching and see what I have. And so 2020 is gonna be the year when I get some of these quilts finished. I have quilts that need to be quilted. I'm a quilter, I have a quilt machine and there should be no reason why I have a pile under my quilt machine of quilt tops waiting to be quilted. There's no excuse for it. Um, and so I also had a couple of quilt kits and I decided, oh, I guess it was on Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, I decided it was finally time to get back into sewing. And I decided to start with a quilt and then get back into project bags because I really, I was feeling anxious. I felt like I need to accomplish something on the quilty side because I was also accomplishing on the cross stitching side. So one of the kits that I had was, um, it's called Simply Stripey by Sweet Treasures Quilt. She does have an online shop. She only opens up once or twice a month um, otherwise, her online shop is open 24 hours, and I will put a link below down to it. Um, I picked up a kit in the summer, and I finished I finished the quilt top day before yesterday. And so this is what it looks like. Let me stand back, and I apologize, the lighting is not that good, so I'll just hold it up, and then I'll talk about it. So it is a throw. Um, it is stitched or it's uh, the fabric line is uh, by French General and it's something Noel. Um, it's technically a Christmas, you know, it was a, a Christmas quilt, but to me it looks more wintry, um, more like Valentine-y winter. And so I thought it'd be perfect to get it done. Um, I'm going to go to Joanne's tomorrow and get the backing for it and I will quilt it this weekend even if it's super cold out there because um, I want it out. I want it, I want it out. So I will, when it's finished, I will post a picture of it on Instagram as well as my Facebook page if you're interested in seeing it. I know that technically this is a, a floss tube cross stitch channel, but I feel like I've made it and I want to show it and, and I love it and it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm glad this is number one of a bunch that I have on my plate to get finished this next year. Also, uh, my friend Retha and I are planning on um, making a quilt together and our goal was to finish some of our other stuff before we began doing that. So this is one of those that needed to be done and one more step towards my goal of starting this other quilt. And I'll talk about that. I mean. I'm nowhere near ready. I think we were kind of shooting for the summer possibly, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about it later. Anyway, so I finished that one. I will quilt it myself. Um, I have batting for it and all I need is uh, backing and then I will, I'll get it, I'll get it done and out on display because like I said, I need, I need more like wintry, even in decorations, I need more like winter decorations. All I have is a couple of mini quilts this quilt here is um, a calendar quilt by Kim Schneider, I think is her name. Um, and then of course I have my winter tree and across the room there's another snowman, but like the three tiered tray is completely empty. I have nothing for it. Out in my other room, um, I have my long time gone quilt out, but there's no decorations. Like the house is naked. And my husband keeps telling me, oh, you need to you know, put some stuff out. And it's like, I don't know what to put out. <laughs> Cause I have chickens. But I feel like it's too early for my chickens so I'll figure it out. Now we have come to the giveaway portion of the video. So for this video um, I decided I am going to do three giveaways. Um, what, what you get is a chart and a project bag to go along with it. Um, I decided that for my one-year anniversary 
and also to celebrate the over 3,000 subscribers that I have on my channel. I figured I needed to do something really cool. Um, originally it was going to be a quilt, but that didn't happen and so that's something that I will aim for next year. Um, but this year, I or to celebrate my Flossiversary, I'm going to do three giveaways. Um, what you will need to do, so I will, um, I'll show you what the giveaways are, and then they're going to be one, two, and three, and so you're going to have to answer the question that I will give to you soon, and then you will have to put one, two, or three, because that's how I'm going to search for it. Um, in past giveaways, when I've had multiple, um, sometimes people will answer the question, but they won't specify one, two, or three, so you must put one, two, or three. You can just do one, you can do number three, you can do number two, you can do one, two, and three. Uh, it's fine, you know, whichever. You just need to put what you what you would like after you have answered the question. So, without further ado, the first giveaway and number one is Winter ABCs by Little House Needleworks. Um, and this is the bag that goes with it. So you will get the chart and the bag. So if you are interested in Winter ABCs and this bag, it is number one. Number two is Spring ABCs by Little House Needleworks. And this is the bag that goes with it. So if you are interested in Spring ABCs, Little House Needleworks, and this project bag, it is number two. Number three is Summer ABCs by Little House Needleworks. And this is its project bag. And so if you are interested in this project bag and Summer ABCs, it is number three. Now, for the giveaway question. My brother asked me this question over New Year's Eve and I had a really hard time trying to figure it out. So I, f I figured, I'm like, if I struggled over my answers, that's a good giveaway question because, you know, I gotta, I gotta like make it big. So if you could go into history and meet three famous people, who would they be? Mine, George Washington, Jane Austen, Queen Elizabeth the first. Um, you don't have to tell me why. I mean, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. You just name off three, three famous people. Um, put it in the comment section below. Specify which one of the giveaways you would like, whether it's winter, spring, or summer. Um, one, two, and three. And in my next video, I will announce the winners. Uh, you must be a subscriber and you must like the video to be entered also. Um, okay guys, that brings me to the end of my video. I just want to, again, thank you all so much for subscribing to my channel, for coming back every two weeks to see what I am up to, following me on social media, on Instagram at Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, and my Facebook page, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. I really do appreciate it. I. I love reading all of your comments. Um, you guys are the best. And I just really, really appreciate you all so, so much. Um, I'm glad that you have come along with this journey with me. And I, I just, I am so, this, the, a year ago when I started this FossTube channel, I, I didn't know what to expect. And every you know this past year has been beyond my wildest expectations and I'm so grateful to all of you guys so so much and you have no idea how much you all mean to me and I appreciate you all so much so uh, before I start crying <laughs> I'm gonna go and um I will see you guys in two weeks and thank you so much for stopping by I appreciate it um I will insert pictures of all of my whips that I showed and uh, yeah, have a great couple of weeks. Bye guys.